Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you all so much for joining me today for Tutorial Tuesday. And in this video, I am going to show you how to take a toilet paper roll and some cheap acrylic yarn from any craft store or dollar store or anywhere really and make an adorable little winter pom-pom hat out of it in about 10 minutes. But before we get started, I want to welcome all of my new subscribers. Thank you all so much for joining me on my crafting adventures. And for those of you who hang out with me every week, it's so nice to see you and I'm happy to have you come back. And this is a YouTube channel about uh, embroidery and needle felting and baking and history and the history of embroidery and other textile crafts and those kinds of things. So if that's something that you are interested in watching regularly, then I'd love to have you subscribe. I post floss tube videos on Fridays and then Tuesdays are wild card videos. And so that's what this is. This is my wild card. And the wild card are tiny little adorable hats. So, you know, you can't go wrong with that. So let's talk about these hats. I started making these hats last winter. And this hat here is actually one that I made last winter. And I made a whole bunch of them for my friend Rachel who owns a local pie and coffee shop downtown. And our town has a, an event, we'll call it an event, called Wassel Fest, where all of the businesses downtown make their own version of wassail or wassail. And basically what, what this is, is it's a hot apple, usually apple based drink with lots of spices in it, like a mold apple cider kind of a thing. Uh, sometimes with alcohol, sometimes not with alcohol, depending on which business you go to. And there's a contest. And so all the businesses are like vying for the best wassail of the year. And uh, my friend's wassail usually comes in second or third. So she has a good wassail. But anyway, I made her a bunch of these and put them on a what is that a garland for her to hang in her shop. And so she still has it and she still hangs it. And I thought that I would just make some more of them this year. And I figured, well, I might as well show you all how to make them too. So I'm going to cut in a video of how to make them right here. And then we'll come back and we'll kind of talk more about it. So check that out. So in order to turn a tube and some yarn into a tiny little hat, you need, well, you need a tube and you can, here I have a paper towel tube, you can use a toilet paper tube um, and you can use other materials too, which I'll talk about later on. You need scissors and here I have all purpose paper scissors and I have fabric scissors. The fabric scissors are obviously not to cut the paper, they are to cut the, the yarn. You need yarn and here I have two different kinds. I have um, loops and threads, uh, Capri yarn and this I just got at Michael's and then I also have like the cheap acrylic what is it red heart from Joanne fabrics but you can use literally any yarn for this and I'll show you some other options when um, I'm done and then I have like a card this is just the backing to a to like a notebook caddy that I got. Um, it's nice and stiff so you can wrap around it. It has little notches in it. It just works perfectly. It's about eight inches long. This I'll just use to wrap around but you can use a book. You can use a piece of scrap cardboard. You can really use anything to wrap it around. I just like this because it was nice and thick. So first what you need to do is you need little rings and I'm gonna use this tube and essentially, you just cut little rings. And I like them about three quarters of an inch. And you don't have to be neat. You can neaten it up at the end. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So this is what I end up with, which is a ring from the tube. We'll set that aside for now. And now I think I'm going to do this one. And you know, for these, you pull from the center 
and I just wrap it around a ton of times and I don't have a particular number of times that I wrap it around. I just wrap it around until I feel like I have enough. You can always cut more. I feel like that's a good amount. It's a, uh, I don't know. I didn't count how many times I wrapped that around. I wrapped that around a bunch of times and I'm going to cut it off. And then you cut off and you have a pile of yarn. And these yarns, because this is about eight inches, are about 16 inches. And that's a little bit long for what we need, but it'll, um, it works great. And I cut off the ends and save them and use them for stuffing things. I may use them in another project later. We have our yarns. Let me step out of the way. We take our hoop and we take a piece of yarn, fold it in half. Like that. We place it through and we loop it through. So essentially all you're doing is looping your yarn around the hoop. And you pick another one. And you want to make sure that they're all going the same way. So I usually do the loop on one side and put it through. So that way, if you see here, both of my loops are on the same side. You want them both on the same side. And you just keep doing that all the way around. For this hat, I'm using a variegated yarn and I'm going for a random color look when I choose which pieces to put on when. But you can also use a solid yarn like the white here or a red or a blue or whatever, and I'll show you how that looks later on. If you have two or more solid yarns, you can be more particular in your choices and do a stripe uh, and really match any decor that you have. I'll show you more color, texture, and size options later, but really the only limit is your imagination, and I would love to see any unusual combinations if folks make these. I saved toilet paper and paper towel rolls to make these, but I did see something called craft tubes for sale at Michael's for six or seven dollars, but they were basically just toilet paper rolls. And I feel like the great thing about these hats, besides their adorableness, is that they're using things we probably already have lying around the house. Overall, this process took about eight minutes to do, but I'll talk about a shortcut at the end. And in total, I would say these, this hat took about 10 minutes to make. Okay, so I have them all looped around. Um, I like tightening up a bit just to make sure they're tight. And you have this nice kind of looped ring of yarn. But what you want is a rim, right? Because this is the kind of what makes it really look like a hat is it has this little rim. And so what you wanna do is take all of these little ends and push them through the hoop. And you know, you want to be a little gentle, but you don't have to worry about being too gentle. And then you want to brush them out, make sure all of the ends are in the hoop through the other side. And then I like kind of just zhuzhing these little knotty loops into there too. And you end up with a base of a hat and a bunch of loose things and then you just want to tie one of your leftover so at this point I like laying it on my table putting my loop around it and then I just tie a double knot I do a what is this I think this is a I don't know what kind of knot that is but a square knot half of a square knot pull it really tight do another knot and I like to do two knots just in case but you know it's not like you're doing anything crazy with it and I keep those out as a way to hang it and then you just trim off the palm and you're done 
you can make your palm as big or as floppy as you want. And I like mine to be kind of like puffball, so I kind of dome them out a bit. And you're left with an adorable little hat. So that is how you make these cutie cute hats. It's that easy. So as you can see, they're really easy to make. And the cool thing about them is that you can make them in so many different varieties. So I have the small ones, which are the size that you saw and that's using a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll, which is usually slightly thicker and more, you know, sturdy. And that's the normal size that I make. So I make all sorts of those, but you can also make them larger. And so this one here is slightly larger here. I'll show you. Okay, I'm holding like 85 little tiny hats here. So you can see the difference in size, right? And this larger one uses rings from this plastic tube. I, I bought some peel and stick removable wallpaper and it came in this tube and I kept it because I make crafts and we keep things. So I kept this and it works great for these, but I was also thinking you could use a ring from a mason jar, right? Basically anything that's a ring you can use. You can also just cut strips of cardboard and roll them and tape them up and use them. And you can also make them much, you can make them smaller. So here's a little white one with bells and this is, so this is the original size and this is the smaller size. And essentially I just cut a bit off of the, the roll and cut, out of it and then taped it up together smaller and you have a tiny little hat like a tiny tiny little hat so you can make these in all different sizes you don't want to make them too big though because they just don't have i mean you know there's nothing whole there's no structure here all of the structure is just in the yarn so if you get much bigger than this which is i would say this is about three inches maybe you could go four inches but you probably don't want to go much bigger than that unless you use really chunky bulky yarn so here we have a kind of a bulkier yarn and that works really well on the big ones but not so much I mean, I guess it kind of works on the small ones but it really works well on the big ones I want to add that after I filmed that tutorial I just started like mass producing tiny little hats and I did it a little bit differently so I don't know if you can see here, but I doubled up the strands. And so each loop has two separate strands in it. So you can see that these loops all have two colors. So each of these, so it's basically groups of four instead of groups of two, like I was doing in the tutorial. So that actually works, that worked better than I expected and it made it much quicker. So I, I recommend doing that um, unless you want a kind of pattern. And so you can do different sizes. You can gussy them up um, with bells, or in this case, I put, um, I just hot glued sequins on the base. You know, you can do it in that way. On this white one, I did a chain stitch around the base, and then I just did a simple woven, a simple weave through the top just to give it a little bit more, I don't know, interest. So I did that. And this one, I did a chain stitch and then I did a wove around the, the base. And for this, I used in some cases, so this looks like it's a pearl embroidery floss, a pearl embroidery floss here. But this white one, I just used a green section of this yarn, which is variegated. So that's, that's an option too. And the neat thing is that hats, of course, aren't Christmas. Hats are winter. And so 
if you don't celebrate Christmas, you can still decorate with these tiny little hats um, in non-Christmas colors. And so I think that that's, that's kind of fun, right? Um, if you decorate for winter, you can do these in whatever your color scheme is. And if you want to decorate for Christmas, you can use them as well. Like I said, you can do them in all sorts of different materials. I'm just going to run through the materials that I used for my demonstrations. The red, white, and green variegated is just this super saver acrylic uh, in the color mistletoe. I got it from Joann's. It was really cheap. So that's the one I did the majority of my tiny hats in is this and I think this is maybe three dollars I mean it was like not expensive so that's that one I don't remember what this big puffy yarn was but I also got it in Joann's um, and it was really inexpensive the fluffy white which has kind of the best I don't know texture it definitely makes the best pom-pom <laughs> so it makes the best pom-pom but that is loops and threads capri i got this at michael's i don't remember how much it was i got it years ago but it's really nice and soft it's a little bit stretchy which is fine but it makes an excellent little pom-pom the old one that i did was in the sugar and cream mistletoe also mistletoe i got this at joann's but it's also at michael's um you can get this everywhere this is a cotton and then for the blue to go with the blue and white i don't have the wrapper for this blue and white but it was uh, i think it's bamboo i just got it at michael's but you don't just have to use yarn um, you can also use things like jute and i got this jute twine from the dollar tree and you can make really adorable hats. If you have a rustic look to your decor, a tiny little jute hat or a jute and white hat is really kind of beautiful. I thought that this trio was just completely lovely in a display or on a tray or something like that. One thing to keep in mind is that the jute doesn't hold its form as well as the yarn does. It really kind of just, it kind of looked like a witch's hat in straw so I had a an empty thread spool that I've been keeping for a while and so I put actually I had two of them and so I put the two jute ones in that and that filled it out really nicely and it, they sit really nicely so if you have it doesn't even have to be an empty one really you could just put one in here I really like how these turned out and I think that these would be really pretty just as a little trio a white, a jute, and then a white and a jute, right? I think that that's a really pretty trio. These are three for a dollar, and it pro you can probably get two hats of this size out of one roll of jute. And like I said, it's difficult to work with, and oh, goodness, it's a mess. But I think that it turned out really, really cute. And you could put bells on it, you could put beads on it, you could put tassels on it, you know, whatever you want. I just think it's adorable. So then the question is, what do you do with a mess of tiny little hats? Well, you can decorate your tree here. So the, the slightly larger ones can be tree toppers. You can use them as ornaments. They're really adorable. You can put them on a garland like I did, and I kind of strung them every six inches on another piece of yarn, and that looked really, really cute. Um, and what I was thinking is you could actually intermix them with like pom-poms. <sighs> so cute. Put them you know, wrap them on your mantle or hang them around your doorway or something like that. I just think that'd be adorable. You can also use them as, um, you can tie them onto presents, which I think would be really cute at, to like decorate presents. Basically anywhere you'd use a pom-pom, you can use a tiny little hat. If you use a, like a plastic like this and it's an acrylic yarn, you can have them outside. Like they can be exterior decorations. You can put them on a wreath, right? There's kind of all sorts of stuff you could do with these. And they're so cute and so easy to make. I just think they're so cute. And I wanted to share them with you because I just find them delightful and adorable. And I have all sorts of yarn that will probably be made into tiny hats. 
this winter to kind of decorate the whole house. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all so much for joining me today. If you make any tiny hats, I love, love, love to see them. Please tag me. Um, I'm on Instagram at Dr. Underscore Christy. I'll put that down below. And if you have any questions about how to make them or if you have ideas for other materials that would be awesome for making them, please put that down below. I'd love to maybe try out your ideas in another video. I think that's it from me. So if you like this video and are not subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe. And with all that being said, I hope you have a, an excellent week. I will see you on Friday and please take good care of yourselves and have a good one.